So in this 2019 Silverado that I just worked on and posted a video on three days ago, came back in with the check engine light, I was sweating for a second. They said that it had the same problem, reduced engine power message on the dash. Um, it was saying reduced engine power just a moment ago and now it's not. So let's check codes. Like I said, this truck came back in and I was sweating for a second, but then I noticed that it actually has a new problem, a new code, uh, cylinder four injector control circuit, P0300 engine misfire and the cylinder four misfire. Most likely the cylinder four misfire would be related to the cylinder four injector circuit. This is actually really pretty common on the L5P diesel and I'm probably just gonna go straight directly to the cylinder four injector connector. Let's take a look at some misfire data. Uh, cylinder four, current misfire two. I didn't really feel anything. No, it's not misfiring right now. So that immediately tells me that the injector is okay and the wiring is most likely okay. Oh, it just dropped out right there for a second. But it is more or less running okay. So that tells me it's the injector and the wiring is most likely okay. I'm gonna go straight to that connector. I'm gonna show you what uh, we usually find. Okay, so take a look. Cylinder four injector lives underneath that cover. This is going to need to be removed out of the way. These two uh, fuel lines are gonna have to be pulled out of the way and then this cover's gonna have to be taken out. This thing's nice and stuck too. So I'm gonna use this hose pick and inject a little bit of lube in there. And then just use the pick to work that around carefully. Okay, so I got that off. Now, do you remember in that last video, that air filter was collapsed? Look at the amount of dirt inside that intake manifold. So you know this engine has been eating dirt and most likely its life has been shortened. Pretty bad. That's what happens when you neglect the air filter though, so. To avoid making any mess, I put an oil diaper underneath the lines. I blew them out clean with air. I'm gonna lube them up with a little bit of WD-40 or similar lubricant. And then when I take these off, the oil diaper will capture all the mess. Twist. Got it that on a little twist, push it in, got it. Notice that oil diaper did a great job of catching the mess. Now I'll just take this out of here and I'll work on getting this cover out of here. There's a couple bolts down there that you have to take loose. Okay, so now we've got that cover removed. I'm gonna put this back on so that I can run the engine during my testing. And I'm gonna just stick this back on temporarily when I get that far. Uh, this is the cylinder four fuel injector right here. So I'm gonna disconnect that and inspect the terminals because we usually find that these terminals are burnt up which with something called fretting corrosion, which is caused by vibration. And I don't know why, but it always seems to be cylinder four. Okay, let's get this disconnected. Now, let me zoom in here. On that. Do you see that blackness, that black brown dust on the face of the connector? That's the first sign of fretting corrosion. It means that that terminal is vibrating like ee, like that, and the metal rubbing on a rubbing on metal on metal rapidly like that causes that kind of fine particulate dust, and that dust gets in between the two uh, metal surfaces and causes high resistance. So. Most likely, now that I've disturbed this, it will be fixed. But that's not truly, you know, fixed. It just means I've, I've temporarily uh, restored the connection. So again, I'm gonna grab the tool and I'm gonna test terminal tension, but I've already kind of seen what I was expecting to see. Go ahead and 
Test terminal tension. Wow, really loose. That one feels better for sure, but that one, let's go back to this one. That one is just loose as hell, loose. Will it fall out? Yeah, it fell out. So that terminal is totally spread out plus the terminal uh, fretting evidence that we found. So we're gonna replace this connector. Got the new connector right here. There's the part number. Gonna go ahead and install that. Also decided that before I make the repair, I'm gonna con reconnect this and run the engine and just wiggle this to see if I can get it to drop out for you guys and just so you guys can see it. After you crimp, pull on it. Give it a good pull. Make sure it's tight. pull make sure make sure there's no punctures here before we seal it see the glue coming out of both ends no punctures now we're gonna wrap it up with tape I'm using woven polyester anti-abrasion electrical tape that's what you should be using tight spaces so you may not be able to see all the action down here but I'm gonna wrap this up real nice get everything secure So that's what our repair looks like. I left it long for a reason, so I can loop it like this and just kind of tie up the excess. So it's gonna go in like that. We're gonna connect it and we're gonna tie up the excess like that, nice and tight to the harness so it's out of the way. Okay, and by doing it this way, we are maintaining a 
harness ratting similar to OEM. This might take some fighting, a little bit of effort. These are a pain in the butt. I'm losing this one, I'm losing this battle. Okay, now fully reassembled. As you can see, there is now evidence that I've been in here, but let's start it up. Uh, it was running fine before, so it should still be running fine now. Check it out, this is the good terminal, test probe. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Look at that skill. Falls right out of there. No terminal tension on that one. Okay, finishing up here, clearing the codes. So in summary, this truck I posted a video on three days ago came back and I was worried for a second. We checked codes and found that it was a completely new problem loose terminals in cylinder four injector connector pretty dang common on these uh ended up replacing the damaged connector and now all is well that's all i got